but I've got an electric vehicle. It doesn't produce any emissions. What would you say to them? <laughs> I'd say, unfortunately, you're wrong. When your tyre tread wears out, we just replace the tyre. But where does all of that worn out rubber go? Well, it turns out a lot of it is emitted as pollution into the atmosphere and it is not the only type of pollution that doesn't come out of a tailpipe. We don't hear very much about this non-exhaust pollution, but it is time to start talking about it. Welcome to Fully Charged. We've been thinking about tailpipe emissions for a long time, but that is not the only pollution that cars cause. And it's time to think about some of the rest. The things, tyres and brakes and road wear that come under this umbrella of non-exhaust emissions. Now, this is not about pointing fingers. There's no technology that's perfect. The important thing is that we understand the problems we're generating because then we can try and reduce them. Now, of course, all of this comes with a big problem because as soon as you're talking about this kind of pollution, you can't see it. And so to start off with, I come here to Marylebone Road in London because Imperial College have an air pollution monitoring station here. And when it comes to air pollution, they can see the invisible. Non-exhaust pollution is the pollution in the air. Normally we're talking about particles in the air. We're talking about particles which aren't from the tailpipe of vehicles, not diesel exhaust, not gasoline exhaust, but particles which are derived from, say, mechanical abrasion, brake wear, tire wear, resuspension of road dust, sort of additives, coverings on the road, the sort of stuff which gets kicked up into the air as a consequence of driving. We don't have standardised test methods. Um, we're, we're looking at four different sources that we've got to try and evaluate and every one of them is quite hard to evaluate and the emissions just, just from the brakes for example depend on, on the, the temperature of the brake pad, the pressure of the, of the brakes uh, which all depends on the speed of the vehicle um, the road surface wear depends in a not well defined way on the weight of the vehicle as with the tyre wear and no two tyres are the same. I can imagine the average electric vehicle driver coming to this for the first time says oh but I've got an electric vehicle it doesn't produce any emissions what would you say to them? <laughs> I'd say unfortunately you're wrong uh, it may not have exhaust emissions we can agree on that but all of the other sources of emissions, all the non-exhaust sources, all four of them, are common to both internal combustion engine vehicles and battery electric vehicles. Now this is a complicated topic and we don't have all the data we need on all the subtleties yet, but here is an overview of what we know now and it starts with thinking about the particle size. So the first thing to worry about is how big these particulates are. And there are three main categories that you might have heard of. There are the ones called PM10, the ones called PM2.5, and the ultrafine particles. Now, if you imagine shrinking yourself down until what looks like a car now is actually the width of a human hair, you can imagine how big each of those is. The PM10s are particles that are 10 microns or smaller, so that makes them about the size of a beach ball when placed next to our shrunken down car. The PM2.5s are smaller than 2.5 microns, and they're about the size of a grapefruit, and the ultrafine particles are smaller than 100 nanometers, so that makes them about the size of a pea. So next we have to worry about what those particulates are made from, and we've got four sources. There's tire wear, brake dust, fragments of road which are often mixed up with bits of tyre and then what's called re-suspension dust and that's the stuff that had settled on the road uh, and it was just sitting there and then as the car whooshes past it gets blown up into the air. 
Now, the exact numbers for what goes in each of these boxes are really hard to measure and they depend a lot on things like driving style and the weather and driving speed and whether you've got lots of hills and corners on your route. So here are the best estimates at the moment. So it looks like tyres and brakes and road wear contribute approximately equally at the moment to the PM10 fraction. And then for the PM 2.5s, it's approximately half in each of these boxes. So, and then on top of that, there's a sprinkling in the ultra fine category. And then it's really hard to come up with general numbers for the resuspension contribution because that depends on the road and how clean it is and when it last rained and that kind of thing. So those numbers can vary quite a lot. So that's what it looks like for a combustion car. So I'm sure that drivers of electric vehicles are looking at this thinking, well, I don't brake very much, I've got regen braking, surely I'm not as dirty as all that. Well, the regen braking does help. You'll generate less brake wear, and so EV drivers are a bit tidier in that category. But at the moment, electric vehicles are heavier, and so they do add a bit more on the tire wear because that depends a lot on the vehicle weight. less about it, in truth, than we know about the exhaust components. So, for example, what we do know is if we're standing here by the side of the road, we'd be breathing in a certain amount of PM2.5, and we know that PM2.5 is bad for our health. It exacerbates respiratory, cardiovascular illnesses, it can lead to premature death. Generally, when we talk about health, focus on the mass of the stuff in the air, which is kind of a relatively crude description. So that's just like, you know, if you, if you weighed it, it doesn't make any that's, difference that's exactly. what it is, it's just if you weigh it here, that's how we measure. You assume that it is all of equal toxicity because you're simply measuring it by mass. And there are relatively few studies which have then tried to sort of like de-aggregate the different chemicals within that mixture. Now those studies which have been done to date tend to suggest that if you were to pick something to focus on right now, you probably would focus on the exhaust emissions. But that does not mean the other components within the air are safe. They're less well studied and there are certainly studies which demonstrate that metals within different sizes of particles in the air have detrimental effects on our health. So when it comes to these, these extra particles, the tyre wear, the brake wear, road dust, road resuspension, um, do we know anything about what they're doing to us? I mean, is it just that they're probably not good for us or do we just have lots of questions to ask or do we have any answers yet? We have a mixture. As always, you have a mixture. So there are some observational studies which suggest that certain metals in the air have effects. Certain metals which have potentially genotoxic effects, such as chromium, nickel and vanadium, they've been linked to, say, cancer risk. Um, there have been metals which have been linked to cardiovascular risk. The reality is, though, that there are fewer studies than there are of the mass, yes, or of the exhaust reactions. And the studies can be a bit equivocal. There are positive studies, there are negative studies, but there are fewer of them. What there is more of is, if you like, the classical wet lab science, the stuff you do on cells in the lab or the experiments you can do with human tissues. And they definitely demonstrate that both tire wear debris and, and particles from brake wear have toxic effects on cell. They will cause damaging oxidation reactions. They will elicit inflammatory responses in those tissues. And so the corollary of that would be if that was going on in your population, being exposed to these fractions, it would be contributing to adverse health effects. these things changing over time so we know for example that vehicles are getting heavier over time you know people well it's not that the vehicles are getting heavier it's just people want bigger cars <laughs> um, how do th how are things like that going to affect these emissions in the future well the the heavier vehicles undoubtedly cause uh, larger emissions so a lot, a lot of uncertainties at the moment but lots of interesting research questions there You need friction between tyres and the road because otherwise your car just wouldn't go anywhere. So even if someone really does completely reinvent the wheel, there are always going to be some tyre emissions. So what do we do about those? 
Well, I've come here to the Makerversity in central London to meet the Tyre Collective, who might have a solution to that problem. So we started looking at microplastics at large and you learn about single-use plastics and microbeads from cosmetics, but something that came up in our research was tire wear. And it was something that we haven't really thought about nor are really aware of, um, and we decided to do something about it. So at the Tire Collective, we're building the first device to capture tire wear. Um, and hope once we captured it, we're hoping to reuse it in different applications, um, like new tire treads or more bespoke rubber products. Well, let's, let's get into the, the, the nitty gritty, and it really literally is the nitty gritty at this point. So there are some lovely boxes full of horrible black gunk here. Tell me what this yeah. is. So that box over there is how much the, the longest bus route in London produces in just one day. And Because that's a lot of like horrible black stuff. Yeah, so this, you know, imagine all these particles just from one bus dispersed all across London. And it is very much an invisible problem, like you said. Um, and you know when we real when we made these cubes, I think it really put into perspective the scale of the problem, um, and just looking at all these particles, you know, being dispersed in, in the air in our waters. So then, ha tell me about your solution to it, because I mean, it it sounds it sounds a bit too simple just to stick stick a little vacuum cleaner up the back end of a tire. How are you going to collect all these particles? So our device uses. We, so we found out that tire wear is charged from friction with the road and therefore we're able to use electrostatics to capture them. So it's got an electric charge on it? Yeah, it has an electric charge on it, so we're able to use opposite charge to essentially attract these particles um, before it becomes dispersed into the environment. Um, and the device, as you can see here, is attached to the steering knuckle uh, of the car, and it uses an array of um, conductive materials, so copper plates in this instance, uh, to attract them. Uh, and once we ca capture them, we can collect them, uh, for reuse purposes. So, so the wheel's kind of like this, and it, it's going around, and this is at yeah. the, to the back of the wheel. So is it's, that it's then? at the back of the wheel. Um, the thing it ha has to be close, as close as possible to the contact patch of the tire. Because uh, it's down while here, given, the friction is being. Yeah, yeah right. while given, you know, the tolerance from the curbs of the road. So, so then the particles come up, and, and then I mean, I can I can see through this. So then the yeah. particles go in between. So the air goes all the way through, but the particles get stuck. That's yeah, the thing. The, so the, the, that device there is um, optimized for to take advantage of the airflow behind a spinning wheel. Uh, that's why it has a funnel that channels the air through, essentially, and the plates attract the tires while the particles go through the plates. And then, and then the, the particles kind of fall off down into a collector. Yeah, know, into so. a collector. So this prototype only focuses on capturing, um, and we'll be developing the, the collection part later on. This sounds very simple. Is it, is it simple to actually make it work in practice? Um, we, we are trying to scale it up um, to you know, different uh, logistic vehicles first. Um, I think attaching a device behind a car is perhaps not, is, is an initial step. Uh, we do envision this device being integrated into all future cars. So kind of like your catalytic converter down the line, but for tire wear. Um, so it would be more seamless into the design of cars um, and also not as you know, obtrusive to having a device there. So it, it'll come with the car, basically. The idea is that the idea, it'll be designed in. The is to be designed into the car, um, into the wheel arch of the car. Okay, so then in, in the future, which we all hope is going to happen, you've got, a, you've got a car, it's got these little collectors. Somewhere down the bottom here, it's then collecting that. Yes. Yeah. So that means you have to empty it <laughs> at yes, some yeah. point. What happens after that? So with, uh, with kind of logistic vehicles, uh, with commercial fleets, for example, uh, the reason they have kind of maintenance crews to then collect it uh, and then put it in uh, a bin, if you will, uh, and that would be sent to our uh, recycling partners to then be processed and then um, reformulated into a new rubber uh, material for it, other inputs. And is it easy to recycle? I mean, you know, you, rubber yeah. is obviously, it's obviously robust because it was in a tire in the first place, but yeah. it, is it easy to reuse it? So because we're only focused on the tire tread, um, it is relatively simple and there are processes in place to recycle micronized rubber particles, but right now they're cryogenically ground instead of naturally grounded. 
So, you, but you can, and, and what, what, is, what could you make out of it? What could you make? So, out of it? you can make new tire treads, for example. Uh, you can make uh, outsoles of shoes. Um, and uh, there are some companies working on using micronized rubber into kind of rubber sheets uh, for fashion purposes. Um, so, there's lots of applications once, re once upcycled. And so, there are two clear messages from all of this. The first is that the weight of the vehicle really matters. Larger, heavier vehicles are going to cause more non-exhaust emissions, and so small vehicles are definitely cleaner. The second is that electric vehicles may produce slightly fewer non-exhaust emissions, which and that'll get better as batteries get lighter, but they are still wearing out their tires, and that pollution is still pollution. Tires and brakes don't wear out just sitting in a cupboard. They wear out because we use them. And so that means that we can change the way we use them to reduce some of these problems. So here are the things we can do. Driving less is always going to help. Driving smaller vehicles definitely makes a big difference. Driving smoothly, so you're not on the brake and the accelerator all the time, that is also going to help. Don't burn rubber. It's, I mean, it's not pleasant anyway. It's definitely causing pollution. Keeping your tires at the correct pressure and correctly aligned definitely makes a big difference. And try to avoid buying cheap tires that are gonna wear out quickly. Knowledge really is power. I, I wish I could click my fingers and just make all of this problem go away, but I can't do that and you can't do that, but we can push for change and now is the time to do it. We don't know everything about these problems, but we do know enough to take them seriously and to act. And so individuals can do things. If you're a driver or you're maintaining cars, you can do things that make this better. But we also all need to push on, you know, the big organizations and manufacturers, the tire manufacturers, the brake disc manufacturers, the people who maintain the roads. We need to push them to make sure that they are designing systems in the future that reduce this. It's not one of those games where everyone can say, oh, it's somebody else's fault. I'm, I'm just not interested in that at all. Everybody has a role to play, but we all can push to make sure that change happens quickly. So that's it for this episode. Check out the Fully Charged Show website and the podcast and all the other episodes that are coming up. Support us on Patreon if you can. And if you have been, thank you for watching. Well, I hope you enjoyed that episode with Helen. I mean, she is amazing. Her grasp of science is staggering. I mean, she really is just an, an awesome person and also quite frightening. That is why I'm being very polite about her. Here is another episode that Helen did a while ago, which is fantastic. Here is the latest episode we've just released up there. You can subscribe to Fully Charged and support Helen. And here is our Patreon link that also helps Helen make more shows. <laughs>